What's going on everybody? This is Cody, the home theater hobbyist. I finally had an opportunity to listen to some Canto audio speakers right here in my room. Over the past few years, every now and then somebody would ask me if I'm going to review like the YU4s or the YU6s from Canto Audio, and I haven't had a chance to re review those, but I have been able to review these. They're premium bookshelf speakers known as the Tux. Um, a few weeks ago, I released or I published my unboxing and one of the commenters said they actually own the Tux and they're like, I really like them. I like the way they sound. And honestly, I can see why these sound good, but they also have a lot of really cool features um, for a speaker. And a lot of it deals with this remote right here. So I'm going to be talking about this remote in different sections. And in fact, let's just go ahead. Let's start off by talking about one of the features that I like. Now, these are active or powered bookshelf speakers. And what that means is you've got a power cable that you plug into the wall and it's got the amplification built right into the box. So all you need to do is plug that power cable in, connect your favorite source and you can begin playing music. Now you can connect sources via Bluetooth because it has Bluetooth built in. It's also got a USB connection so you can connect to your computer, an optical connection so you can connect to your television. It's got an RCA jack so you can use RCA if you need to. And it's also got a phono with pre-out connection so you can connect your turntable. It has a subwoofer out connection so you can connect your subwoofer and it has a headphone jack up front here so you can connect all sorts of things including headphones to this speaker and this is the primary speaker and this is the secondary speaker. Now the primary speaker out of the box is denoted as the left speaker but for some people uh, this has to be the right speaker because maybe that is where your uh, plug is for your wall outlet or maybe that's where all your connections are on the other side of your rack and so you really need to make this the right speaker and not the left speaker so you can switch this to be the left or excuse me the right speaker all you need to do is grab the remote push the push and hold the track forward button and all of a sudden it will switch to be the right speaker and what it does is down here is a little led indicator the leds start pulsing to the right and i like that because it looks really cool and lets you know that this has become the right speaker but if at some point you want to make it the left speaker you push and hold the track back button and the leds will go back in the left direction to let you know that again this is the left speaker and i like it because it's a cool feature and they've added some design whimsy to it that's kind of cool just seeing those leds kind of move one way or the other and like i said we'll talk about those again in a moment but um one of the other things i like about this is out of the box after i got them out of the box i set them up and i broke them in for i don't know like 24 hours or so and most of it was done overnight so i really didn't listen to them but then i set them down on this table and the first thing i noticed after i set them down and i began Again, playing music was man these have a lot of bass i mean if you are looking for some if you were looking for some speakers that can really support some bass heavy music these can do it um but the reality is i was like it's, it's got so much bass i could feel it through the floor and that's because i hadn't put the feet on i'd forgotten to put the little feet on the bottom of the speaker because out of the box they come with these little feet that you just stick on the bottom once i did that it decoupled the speaker from the table and so it actually cleaned with bass performance and i was like hmm, that sounds pretty good but i wish it had just a little bit more treble and so to confirm that it didn't have as much treble as i was looking for i actually put on one of my favorite movies uh jurassic park i just used the usb connection connected it to my computer and began playing jurassic park and uh i went to the scene where the tyrannosaurus rex escapes out of its containment and you know tyrannosaurus rex is roaring it's roar, 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 you know you got all this good deep bass coming out of here but while he's doing that one of the doctors uh dr allen or excuse me dr grant and dr malcolm are sitting in the uh, SUV they're sitting in a Ford Explorer and it's raining and as you're listening to that if you're listening to for the rain you can tell that the rain is hitting the roof and it's got some decent you know travel performance but what I could hear was I could hear the fat drops plop 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 hitting the roof of the SUV and I didn't hear some of the tiny drops I was like needs a little bit more travel so again I went back to the remote I reduced the bass by two and I increased the travel by two and then three and what I noticed after I did that was all of a sudden I could hear more of these smaller drops hitting the roof of the SUV. And so I liked it. I was like, it really kind of cleans up the sound because you can EQ these speakers with just the remote in your hand. I like that a lot. In fact, let me play an audio sample so you can hear the difference between the out of the box sound that I was getting and the EQ sound that I ended up with. Like two magnets, we are drawn to each other. You just know how to push on my We are drawn to each other. 
each other You just know how to push all my buttons Moved out of town and I erased your number But still I find myself calling in the middle of the night And there is nothing All right, hopefully you enjoyed those audio samples and heard the difference between the two. I chose that song because it starts off with sort of a bass, so you get that, but it's also got those female vocals in there so you can hear how it voice sounds, and then you've got the treble, you've got the high end, so you can hear how that sounds. And the first one was the out of the box sound, and the second one was the EQ'd sound. And like I said, I did uh, the plus two on the treble and the minus two, or I decreased the bass minus two, and I found that that gave the most balanced sound amongst the frequencies while still maintaining detail and clarity. And in, in fact, increasing the clarity on the treble. One of the things that the AMT tweeter is known for is its clarity and its detail. And I found that it gave me a little bit more clarity and detail, both on Jurassic Park, but also on the other movies and even when listening to music. Hopefully you heard that when you were listening to those audio samples. Now, I did play around with that treble adjustment and I found that above plus three, it was a little bit too bright, a little bit too much treble. So that's kind of where I would cap it off. But you can actually increase the treble and the bass plus six or decrease it minus six. So it's a plus or minus six range. So you can really adjust it for what you're looking for. And speaking of that, you can set a global EQ for all the inputs, but they also give us the ability to set EQ for each one of the inputs, again, using this remote. So that's one of the features that I like is you can actually set your TV EQ, your computer EQ, your Bluetooth EQ, however you want. But now let's move back into the mid range. Uh, even with those small EQ adjustments, hopefully you noticed that her voice still sounded full it still sounded rich and honestly i still think it sounds good and these speakers are just a little bit warm and that gives us that sort of rich full presentation so i like the vocal presentation of these speakers even when they have just a little bit of eq applied and moving on to bass like i said these have bass for days if you're into bass heavy music or movies these pretty much have you covered even with an eq of minus two you get still get nice detail and plenty of impact per the specs they'll play down to 50 hertz but i was able to get them to play down to 40 hertz with authority in between 30 and 40 hertz the output drops like a rock i'm talking like 15 db so you know anything below 40 hertz you probably want to add a subwoofer but most music and even a lot of movies are at 40 hertz and above so these will give you a great experience but if you do want to add a subwoofer, it has that subwoofer out connection. And I actually tried two subwoofers with these speakers, the SVS PB1000, which is a 10 inch ported subwoofer and a Q Acoustics QB12, which is a 12 inch sealed subwoofer. I have that in for review and I was happy because I could try both. And the first thing you need to do once you connect a subwoofer real quick is you need to activate the crossover. It crosses over at 80 Hertz, but what you have to do is you have to push and hold this subwoofer button on your remote and hold it for like five seconds. Then these lights will flash down here and it will activate that crossover for you. Then all of a sudden you're sending more of the bass to your subwoofer than the speakers are getting and you can get a good experience. And from my experience with those two subwoofers, I have to say I prefer a sealed subwoofer with these speakers because they're ported and they play good bass. I don't know if you are getting a whole lot more out of a ported subwoofer. You can hear, you know, obviously a bit more depth and detail, but a sealed subwoofer gives you the depth, the detail, and also that transient, those fast transients. So for my money, I would go with a sealed subwoofer. Now, the good news is Kanto Audio does sell a sealed subwoofer or a few sealed subwoofers rather uh, to go with these. So I would probably go with those. Do you need them? No, I don't think you need it, but it is a nice to have. Now, I did connect these to a television via that optical connection. And I have to say, whenever you connect these to a television, you need to make sure that you go into your audio output uh, for your television and set it to PCM. Not Dolby Digital, not DTS, not auto or anything like that. Set it to PCM because if it's not set there, you're gonna hear strange digital noises coming out of your box, not the music and vocals that you're looking for. So make sure you set it to PCM. But I watched several movies because I wanted to check the soundstage for these speakers. And one of the movies that I watched was A Quiet Place. And there is a scene in A Quiet Place where a pregnant mother is checking on her baby. And so she's got a stethoscope that she puts in her ears. And then she actually 
tries to find the baby and find the baby's heartbeat. And you begin hearing the baby's heartbeat. And it starts in the center and it radiates out into the room. And these do a great job giving you a surround presence with just these two speakers. You actually feel like you've kind of got some speakers on the side of your head. So it works really well. Now, is it as good as a dedicated like 7.1 setup or an Atmos setup? No, it's not quite as good as that because if you have that setup and I have an Atmos setup here, uh, you'll notice that that sound starts in the center and it actually kind of moves to the left and it's really coming out of sort of your left surround speaker over there. Whereas with this, it's kind of, it's is in the left ear, but it's also in the right ear as well. So it doesn't do as good localizing the sound, but it does give you a nice surround experience. Now, to check the height of the soundstage, I use the latest James Bond movie, No Time to Die. In that movie, there's a scene where uh, James Bond is in a car chase and he kind of gets surrounded by all the bad guys in this square and they begin shooting at his car and he's in there uh, protected and everything, but he's in there. And um, during this scene, there are some church bells playing overhead, ding, 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 ding. And so this is actually a decent Atmos presentation. And I noticed with these, that these definitely give you height, but it's not dedicated Atmos. It's not like you have dedicated speakers up there, but it does give you height to give you that sense of, okay, there are bells ringing overhead. So I think they do pretty good with height, but just not dedicated at most speakers. All right, let's talk about comparisons really quick, because I know some of you out there are asking, well, how did the Tux compare to the Fluence AI-61s? How do they compare to the Kef LSX-2s that you reviewed? And I'm going to talk about that here. But the first thing I want to say is, honestly, it's not a fair comparison at all between these three speakers, because they are priced completely different. The Fluence AI-61s, they're like $299 as I record this. These Tux, $899. The Kef LSX-2s, $1,399, again, as I record this video. So we're talking about five, $600 price differences in these speakers. And you know, you kind of get more features as you kind of move up that price range a little bit. So they're not really all that comparable, but I will give you some of my thoughts. So as far as the Fluence AI-61s are concerned, these have better bass performance than the Fluence AI-61s. Whatever they've done to tune the bass in this is impressive because these are five and a quarter inch drivers and those uh, Fluence AI-61s are like six and a half inch drivers, but these have better bass performance. I also believe that these tune up a little bit easier with the the EQ settings, bass and treble compared to those AI-61s. They both have bass and treble adjustments, but I do think that it's easier to tune these and you can get a much more pleasing sound out of these overall, whether it be in the you know high end at the mid range and at the bass with these speakers. And partially, I think that's due to the fact that it's got that AMT tweeter there versus that uh, silk dome tweeter on the Fluence AI-61s. Both sound good, but I do think that these sound better. Just wanna put that out there, okay? These also have a few more features including the phono preamp out and they have the um ability to again adjust the eq for the different uh inputs that you have it's got a headphone jack you know it's just a few more features here that the fluence ai61s have okay so i do think that these are better now the kef lsx2s um sonically i would say these and the kef lx2s are a little bit closer sonically than these and the fluence ai61s my opinion um but I will say that I think that the Kef LSX tunes lean just a little bit more music, whereas compared to these, I would say these lean just a little bit more home theater. Now, can you use home theater or music for either one of the speakers, the Kefs, the Tux, or even the Fluence AI-61s? Yes, you absolutely can. But between the Kefs and these Cantos, I would have to say that that's how they lean. Now, I do think that with those Kefs, you get a better treble uh, presentation from them than you do out of these. I think you get a little bit more detail, a little bit more clarity out of the treble regime from the LSX-2s. But again, these dominate in the bass department with these drivers. It, it really just do, does dominate. So you kind of have that going on. Um, now, as far as features are concerned, there's a lot more features with those LSX2s compared to these. Number one, you have to use a wire to connect these two speakers together with the tux. With the LSX2s, you can wire them together if you want to, but they can also talk between one another wirelessly. So that gives you greater flexibility when you're placing the speakers. You also get a lot more colors with those as well. But they also have that Kef Connect app. And that's a pretty big deal because it allows you to do a lot in the app, including, you know, 
adjusting EQ and stuff like that. But you can also sign into your favorite music services like Tidal, like Spotify, like Amazon Music and play them from within the app and not tie up your phone's Bluetooth connection. So if you're playing uh, Apple Music or Amazon Music or Tidal or whatever from your phone with the Tux, you're going to be tying up your Bluetooth connection unless you use like an aux cable or something like that. So your phone is kind of tied up, right? So that's one of the differences between these and those um, Kef LSX2s. Now, again, you pay more for the LSX2s, right? So I'm just kind of telling you those are some of the differences between the two, and it's up to you what you want out of it. But those are how I see it. I think that it's not really a fair comparison, but I do think that the Kefs probably lean a little bit more for the music, whereas these lean a little bit more for home theater. And sonically, both of them are better than the Fluence AI61. So Hopefully that helps. Hopefully you are able to make a buying decision from what I have said there. Now, if you want to purchase these because these are great speakers and I don't have any issues recommending them, they work really well. I like all of the features and um, they give you enough cords to kind of get you going in the box and make sure you hold on to your remote so that you can set up all the things that you need to set up here. But if you want to purchase these or anything else, use those links in the description below. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you next time.